Hello, I'm Martin Richards and this is part two of the Driftworks R32 rebuild and I come with exciting news. I'm Martin Richards, I'm the driver of the Driftworks R32, 2019 King of Riga and I'm back. Instincts going no looking bad like a bat with an eye patch. All black through the woods with a backpack and a lit match. Spark one time, get the whole city looking like a dark set of orange when I burn it down. But it is what it do, hopefully get live on the talk of the town. City had a well this is exciting yeah this is a seriously exciting box of goodies i am so excited to like start opening this stuff up um but yeah this has been a hot topic for the last couple of years really with the car um it's got quite some old electronics in there and we've always talked about upgrading, having dash displays inside the car, knowing what's going on. It's always been a massive worry of mine uh, while competing in this thing is if something goes wrong, wiring wise or electronic wise, I'm a little bit lost with it all. So really excited that Haltech have come on board and we've got a massive box of goodies here to get stuck into. It's, it's a lot of exciting things. Shall we do an unboxing video? So we, we're not gonna go too technical, but let's, there's a lot of stuff in here, so let's open it up, see what we got, see what we're playing with, and just explain some of the choices to some of the components we've got here. Yeah, this is yeah a massive box of goodies, and let's just get in and <laughs> see what because we've you're got. Wobbling. <laughs> <laughs> first things first, uh, this is a Haltech Nexus R5 ECU and PDM control unit. When I saw this thing released. Uh, I think this is a game changer with uh, ECU setups. A lot of um, companies now do PDM control units. If you don't know what a PDM control unit is, it basically eliminates all the relays, a lot of wiring in the car, um, and means you can control everything from the fuel pumps, headlights, fans, um, GoPros. <laughs> GoPros. The works. Various sensors. It can talk directly to your dash. Um, to give you all the display and the beauty about this unit is it has the engine ECU inside it as well so it's one complete unit uh, I feel like I have to get into it and have a look, have a look. Yeah, let's have a look that is one mother of an ECU first look it's quite big but um, as I said before this does PDM control and it also does engine control so it's basically this thing one brain will control the whole of this car um, literally power in an earth out it has Wi-Fi built into it so basically I can connect a computer to it to see all the data see what's going on without having a wired connection which is great apparently it works from quite far away so in the pits, can literally just grab the laptop out. I don't have to plug in a USB and can just look at data login, all the controls, all the, the switching units and things like that. So really cool. We're gonna mount that in the car. Do you just mount it on, a, on the dash? Or never, do you need to see it or not? I don't need to see this, oh, no, okay. because we'll come to another thing in a minute. <laughs> It's the thing that I'll see. Next up, another big box, IC7 dash display. This is quite an exciting thing, and not just for this car, but as a, as a product itself, this is the item from Haltech that's getting a lot of talk on the internet. Yeah, this is a, a very good, simple looking uh, ECU, that's dash, a dash. dash unit that is apparently really easy to use, really easy to program, looks cool, and for me, this is seriously exciting to be able to see what's actually going on with the engine. Um, all I've had before in the car is an oil pressure gauge, an oil temperature gauge that kind of stopped working and was showing like 200 degrees at some stage, a uh, water temperature gauge, and a fuel pressure gauge. As well as the normal clocks in the R32. Which, yeah, only the rev counter worked and Perfect. the fuel gauge no it doesn't work anymore when it had the standard tank it did work <laughs> TLDR yeah stuff from the 80s stuff yeah well was. This, this is an 80s, a late 80s early 90s car it was and it was an engine conversion it still had the original wiring loom in the car that's that's another thing that 
has always been a worry about this. It's original, the original R32 body loom converted for the Jay-Z conversion that was put into it. Then it's had adaptions for the Cyvex, then adaptions for when we did the rebuild to run the fans to the back. And it's just been added on here and there. And when we did the revamp in 2017, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, Simon and I took all the loom out minimized it as best we could wrapped it all up it was a complete bird's nest and put it back in and hoped we wouldn't have to see it again and we have been really lucky we haven't had many or any wiring faults really um, but it's always one of those massive worries that if you are at an event you just before qualifying and have a wiring issue where do you look you know uh, it's it's very scary time and yeah having all this going into the car is just going to make life a hell of a lot easier we can look at stuff going on we can look back at stuff if ever we have an issue and see you know if the the fans overdrawed overdrawed over pulling too much power yeah pull, pull too much power and um instead of blowing fuses it trips something inside here um a solid state relay or um it tells you what's going on so that's for us in the competition environment is invaluable really to and we'll get onto more like stuff in in the box of goodies so that's a dash it looks really cool uh, we're going to mount that in where the original dash is yeah and everything i can see there it's going to be pretty cool what's this wonderful box this is another little box uh and this is the keypad basically got some fancy little sticker pads so yeah this is the control panel keypad got loads of little uh, cool little stickers I don't know what that one's for if I want to die <laughs> kill switch kill switch yeah <laughs> or, it's, it's ass whooping time ass perfect unleash the beast that's for m5 owners if you're an m5 owner you can unleash the beast Altec have told me there's a, another slightly bigger keypad um that's available so uh, i think once we start wiring up and working out which buttons yeah. we want to use i suppose ignition start wipers neons lights although we haven't got any neons nitrous uh things like that so yeah that's the eight button keypad good card. i think there's oh, <laughs> quick maps <laughs> and then i think there's a bigger one um so yeah looks really cool yeah um and i always keep an eye on race car builds car builds and seeing some buttons like that in a car is pretty cool it's one of the best things about the corolla where you just starts it from from switching panels yeah, yeah. at the roof yeah maybe that's where you put that no it's going in the dash <sighs> so that's really cool so yeah those are pretty much the basics of what this package is needed to control the engine the car oh and the package A massive wiring loom but it looks like a big wiring loom but that actually is everything we need for the whole car and that's the beauty about kind of this product is you're not dealing with an engine ECU and then a PDM or a load of relays and wires everything's controlled by that we can mount that and just run battery cable to it earth cable and then simply put all these wires so is this the car ECU uh, car loom. That's the car you see here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is the engine and body loom all in one. And then from the wiring diagram or what we choose, we can send two plugs, go to the engine bay and the rest go down the car and control F. And because you are going to put bulkhead connectors in as well, aren't you? Yeah, this is something that I really want to always focus on is making the car easy to work on. Um, the horrible old time we had in Germany when the engine blew and we had to take the engine out. Um, sifting through and unplugging the loom from the engine before you remove it out is not only time consuming but quite stressful. And always worrying that you're gonna tweak or pull a wire or not put something on right. So this, 
what I plan hopefully to do is have a bulkhead connector so if we ever we need to remove the engine we just twist the connector come off and the engine come out with the wiring loom still attached another item that Haltech do which I think is really interesting and really cool which is a new product they do is uh, this which is actually a pressure sensor and a temperature sensor built into one um, usually you'd have one pressure sensor and one temperature sensor to say reading oil um, and this is one sensor that does both those things so less wiring less sensors less things to go wrong oil and temperature sensor all in one that is pretty cool so we got a couple of those next thing flex fuel sensor um, this is if we decide to use ethanol um, some of the, the race fuels use ethanol um, E85, E100 this uh, is kind of a key thing for the tuning of that um, it measures the amount of ethanol in the fuel you attach it into the fuel line and the ECU can work out the percentage of ethanol in there and adjust the map or the AFRs to suit um, we're not planning to use ethanol at this stage but future proofing, we do. Future yeah. proofing uh, if we want to run ethanol may as well put it in now the I want to build the loom now into the car um, and like you say future proof it and if we decide to go down that route it's there ready to go lock sensors pretty standard stop the knocky knocks detonation um, I don't think there's no explanation needed there uh, this thing's pretty cool speed input module so this is a GPS speed input module including a GPS antenna plugs in so this plugs into the ECU and will give us speed I presume position on track as well I guess so yeah that's pretty cool um, I don't know too much about it at this stage but I'm but considering we said we don't have a working speedo, actually it's probably quite a nice thing to have. And especially since you're going to be data logging, yeah. you might find when you're at certain speeds or certain points, you're this having is issues. Where this can get very nerdy. Nerd. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I can see probably from looking at the data logs what speed we were doing at a certain point in the track. Somebody else might be doing it quicker or doing something different. This might tell me. Can hub four port DTM. Do you know what this is? A lot of uh, this ECU communicates via CAN uh, from the ECU to the dash to other things so I presume that is a plug-in adapter so we can run multiple CAN supported units in this car. You'll have to forgive me I don't know too much about CAN. Um, but this is going to be a learning experience and I'm going to take you on the journey as well. Me or the viewers? The viewers. This is a cool... What's this? A rotary trim module. Oh. I think... So this... Again, can go into the dash and I suppose on this I could set different um, maps, boost levels, things like that we could probably yeah have a, a few different map settings could probably turn the nitrous on or select something to do in nitrous with that maybe it's yeah. nice having all of these components from the same manufacturer yeah that's a, the beauty about Haltech um, is they actually support everything you want to do they have all the sensors all the wiring kits um, they actually do a lot of plug and play ECUs, they do a lot of ECUs um, and engine looms to go with them. So yeah. like the Elite series you can actually buy. Which you can see on one of Jay's videos because yeah. he is running Haltech in his. And he's running an LS, LS engine loom, yeah. loom with, with it, the Elite yeah. 2500. That's it, yeah. yeah so they, and the dash. And, they do and the same else. Elite um, Harness for a Jay Z and I think some up some other engines. Yeah, they're all on the website, so have a look. Check out driftworks.com yeah. for those. And I, I think their plan is to maybe do uh, a loom kit that will work with the mm. Nexus R5. Don't know, we'll see. 
one thing we've had with the Martin Walton manifold that we've had made for the car for the new turbo setup uh, we've had ports in each uh, runner of the exhaust to put in EGT sensors into each cylinder um, we touched on that earlier but that's uh, a tuning method so we can tune the cylinders a little bit more evenly and monitor it so if we have a, a cylinder that's seemingly getting hotter or colder than the other the ECU will detect that and either warn me or make a correction I suppose that's also coupled with that's a wiper motor oh that's 4.9 yeah wide band <laughs> sensor Oh, it's not a wiper motor. No, it's not. I thought it was. A, oh, I misread. You thought this was. I thought that an was LSU wiper motor <laughs> hardware pack, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a wide band O2 sensor, which again monitors uh, the air fuel ratio um, and can adjust or warn me um, if shit's going wrong, basically. Boxes. We've got map sensor. Yep, standard. Standard air temp sensor, pretty standard stuff. Throttle position sensor, another knock sensor, cool and temp sensor, another rotary switch panel, some fittings. This is another thing, how to do everything. You know, if you want some. Fittings, these are actually for the. Um, oh, you've broken the display. Shit. These are actually for the flex fuel sensor that I push on clip fittings and they change them to AN6. So they'll just go on to the normal fuel lines that I'm making for the fuel rail. And then this. A tyre monitoring system. What the hell? <laughs> so good. Yeah. It's so good. I'm quite excited for this. Tyre monitoring system. So these... There's a little box and four sensors that screw onto your valve cap. So I will be able to see in real time the tyre pressures. When you've asked temperatures, I think these do as well. Yeah, and so you've asked Tess to put... 20 psi and you look and there's 24 yeah there was one time i think connor shanahan went out for battle mm. and flew straight off track and it turned out afterwards that his mechanics may or may have not put far too much pressure in his tires or not let them down this will tell me if that happened but it, it will also tell you other things so if you've got a slow puncture on the front yeah that may not be that noticeable actually in a battle yeah. It'll make quite a big difference. And it would be really interesting to see actually what temperature your tyres get to yep. after a drift run. Yep. So Technology. It's cool. Not like, like my team or, no, no. or Simon or Whoever Mixture else. will ever forget to lower my tyre pressures when I tell them to. So that about wraps it up. I've got some freaking awesome goodies here and I can't wait to get stuck in, wiring it up, and making all this work. So I think you're going to go away now, have a look, have a closer look at everything you've got, start making plans, and especially with the loom, uh, which, is, which is down there, it's not, it's, it's not terminated, so you need to work out where you're going to run it, what options you need to put on, and you have had offers of people to make the loom for you as well. Yeah, like I, like I said before, like I, I've wired up ECUs, I've wired up various cars, I've um, made looms before, um, so... Why are you resting on your hand, Martin? I don't know, because I'm <laughs> thinking. <laughs> um, so there's lots of new stuff to learn in here. I've never wired up a PDM. Um, I think it'll actually be easier than you know, wiring up a car with relays and stuff. Mm. Uh, but there's loads of stuff to get my head around. I've got the awesome help with from uh, Mark and the guys at Mark and Haltech. Luke, super knowledgeable. Yeah. They're the main European distributors for Haltech. That's where 
and we're one of the main retailers for Haltech. So if you can't get help from us, the Driftworks office, yeah, you can get help from the Haltech guys. And actually, because they're a massive worldwide company, they're big in Australia, big in America, there's 24 hour support. Yep. And uh, they're quite new to the UK or breaking out to this? It's been difficult to buy Haltech up until yeah. uh, to Mark uh, Buff. Uh, from yeah, and that's one on. of the main things now is they've got a really good supply, an office quite close to us here yep. um, that have always got stock of all of these goodies and um, I think in a further episodes of this series we're gonna, I'm going to show you about the wiring and then the configuring and programming which is prob probably a minefield for some people, you know, they'd buy this, this stuff but it's interesting it in their car. The plan is to put this EC, um whole setup on the current engine because we know it works there's nothing wrong with the engine so we know the car mechanically is fine yeah that's kind of my plan is to uh first of all i'm going to start fabricating the turbo on there and the uh the manifold make the downpipe and basically get the turbo setup working on that engine there uh get all the wiring make sure it works and then we can transfer the new long block here it is <laughs> the new <laughs> long block will be there. built there um, and then just swap it over and it should be a quite easy transition go back for tuning and turn the power up kind of thing exciting yep i'm really excited uh, it's got a lot of work to do now well you still got my engine to do yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's going to be an exciting month or two yeah or three or three yeah potentially we want to get this running kind of early march i'd say it's cool would be nice um and iron out any issues before the season starts which is scheduled to be end of may i believe um and get some testing and get used to the on the new power and working out how to get the most out of all this awesome goodies here it's exciting yeah well thank you very much if anyone has any questions drop us a message. Um, I know the Howtech guys will be w uh, watching as well, so they might reply if you have slightly more technical stuff. Yeah. Um, any questions to Martin? I think I'll have a few questions, so. Don't, <laughs> you can message them directly though, you don't need yeah. to put a comment on your own video. But yeah, like, subscribe, share, buy some merch. Martin is wearing the new flat cap, um, which is Driftworks, made by New Era. Do a twirl, it says Driftworks on the back as well. And that's a new hoodie. It's all very exciting stuff. New ECU, new clothing. It's like Christmas. <gasps> oh, it's very close. It is very close. How exciting. Like, subscribe, share. Thank you for watching. See you later. At Driftworks, we've helped over 50,000 happy customers since 2004. Our huge online parts store is simple to use with superb shipping rates to anywhere in the world and finance options available for UK customers. We live and breathe wheel fitment, so if you have any questions about your own car or any of our products before placing an order, please drop us an email at shop at driftworks.com or give us a call. Thanks for watching.